Welcome to Ships Tips, episode seven. Now on this episode, I've brought you to a lovely little fishery. It's called Court Farm Fishery. It's near Worcester. I've never actually fished this venue before. I've never even seen it. So it's gonna be a bit of a challenge for me. And now this episode is all about winter carp fishing. And as you can probably see from the camera, it's not, I'm not sat in the greatest conditions. It's quite windy, it's in me face, but that's what these ship's tips are all about. It's not just about how to catch the fish, but also fishing in tough conditions, which is what this is gonna be today. It's quite cold. I think it was only like five degrees this morning. I'm itching to get out there and catch some fish. So the first thing I'll do is run you through the preparation of the bait. Just gonna go through the bait now. And like a lot of carp fish in the winter, it's quite simple as it comes to bait. Now I've got a small selection here. I've got some two mil fin perfect pellets that I've actually soaked. So what I've done, when I got to me pegged this morning, I've put my box down. The first thing I've done is done a bit of prep preparation. So what I've done, I've put some, like a pint and a half of two mil fin perfects in a two pint container. And what I've done, I've put the same amount of water as there is pellets and just patted them down with my fingers and then left them. And I've probably been setting up sort of 40 minutes or so. And now they're absolutely perfect. They're in the block like that. I can just do that. And they're, they're soaked all the way through. Obviously, if I was fishing in the summer, I might not do that because I want the bait a bit harder. You know, when I got to this venue this morning, it's cold. I think the fish, you know, they'll probably take some time to get feeding. And I think having a soft two mil pellet is definitely going to help get the fish feeding. And I've done exactly the same. I've got some pro four mil pellets there and I've just put the same amount of water on. I've left them for about half an hour and I've just taken the water off. So they're sort of soaked. And as we get fish in, by the end, you know, within an hour or two, they'll be soaked right through. If you want a soft pellet, you can actually do these the night before the same time as I do my expanders. But when I found out about this venue, there's lots of carp between two and four pound. I thought I don't want them soaked right through. You know, I just want to try and get them fish to take a bigger pellet. And that's what I've done before. It's all about gambles during the winter, but I'm obviously telling you what I think, what I'm going to be doing today. The next bait, obviously a fantastic bait during the winter is corn. I've got a tin of F1 corn there. And this F1 corn's got these tiny little bits in. And I catch absolute loads of fish on certain venues during the winter with these tiny, tiny little bits of corn. You put a normal size bit of corn on, you don't get a bite. And I think that's what this venue is going to be like today. I think these tiny little bits of corn, you know, if these carp are crafty, these sort of two, three pounders can be really crafty some days. I think these little bits of corn will be deadly. And then I've got my pro expanders that I've done last night. Um, really, really easy to do. Got a little bit of bait booster on them. And all I'm going to do with them is tip them in a container like that. I don't drain them off. I just keep them in the water like that. You can smell the bait booster that I put in last night. It's all soaked into the expanders and they're absolutely perfect. And I've got some fours and six mils. Because six mils some days can be absolutely brilliant. So that's the bait. I'm itching to get fishing. I'll talk you through all the kit that I'm using whilst I'm going. Let's get out there and catch some winter carp. Right, I'm all ready to go now. Everything's ready. Plumbed up. Got my rigs ready. Got all my bait ready. Now what I'm going to start with, I'm actually going to start on like a triangle. So I'm going to put a bit of bait on three lines, two at 13 metres and one at 10. But I'm actually going to start at 10 metres because I think the wind's blowing in my face a little bit. It is cold, you know, it's not the greatest day probably for catching short. But at least I can start somewhere and I can work out to 13 metres because I'm pretty sure maybe for the first two, three hours, them 13 metre lines are probably going to be the best. But at least, one, if the wind gets up, I've got another line to go to, but I'm going to start at 10 metres. And I'm going to feed very little on each line, to be honest. And this is the mistake some people make on carp fishing. They think because they're fishing for carp, even in the winter, they're going to put a big pile of bait in and it might take them ages and ages to get a bite. That's what you don't want to do in the winter. Obviously, if things don't work out as I'm fishing, I will introduce some more bait to try and get the fish to react. But I don't want to do that at the start. So what I'm going to do on each line, obviously I'm going to start at 10 metres. So I'm actually going to feed my 10 metre line first because that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to put a little ball of micros in like that. Like a conker sized ball of micros, everything perfect. I can see it squeeze them, you know, not too hard. So they just hold together. So they're going to break up really quick. 
and I'm just going to literally put a few four mils, sort of 10 four mil soap pros on the top. Nice and simple. So I'm going to go out of 10 meters. Got my big pot on there to start with. Obviously got a little cab pot on me rig. I've got myself marked up with a, a tree on the opposite bank. So plunk that in. So that's it 10 meters and it me my other two lines are at 13. I'm gonna do exactly the same. Because it is about, I assume it's probably about five, just over five foot deep. So I'm gonna put a little ball in again. A few of those four mils. Because we all know how you know pellets are a, a fantastic bait for carp in the summer and the winter. So straight out to 13 meters, and like I said, I've done this on a triangle sort of shape. So I've got myself slightly to the right marked up with a tree in the field. And on the other line, I'm just going to introduce a little bit of corn as well. Because that's what I do in these sort of, you know, if I go to a venue that I don't know as well, it keeps your options open. So a little ball of two mils, and I'm going to put like 15 grains of F1 corn in like that. Nice and easy. And that's going slightly to the left. Because I don't know this venue. If I was going to a venue I knew really well and thought, well, I don't need to do that, obviously. But if you come to a venue like I have today, I haven't never fished it. It gives you that little bit of confidence that you can move around your peg and you can catch. So that's all the three lines fed. And rig wise, just fly through the rigs before I start. Nice and simple. I've got a 10 draw hollow, which is perfect for, you know, for small carp up to sort of six, seven pound. But it's great for two pound fish as well, which is what I've been told is in this venue. Um, 015 power line main line. I've actually opted today because of the weather's not great. The wind's in my face a little bit. I've opted for a 4B16 F1 pellet, which has got a nickel titanium wire. So it's a little bit more stable. And getting down to the shotting pattern, it doesn't get easier. With a lot of my fishing, as you all know, try and keep it as simple as possible. I've got a small bulk of number eights, and I've got two number nine droppers spaced out below. Six inch up length, 15 centimetres of 013 power line to a 16 GPM. Just pre-tied, straight off the mag store system, it don't get easier. And I'm going to start with a six mil expander. Something quite big. And just get that 16 straight into the pellet like that. Absolutely perfect. You know, it might take some time to start catching. I don't know, but that's how I'm going to start the session today. Not going to put anything in the little pot at the moment. And we've just got planes, trains, and automobiles again just come over as I've started fishing. So I'm going to go out to 10 meters. And just hopefully we get a bite. So just let that go down. I'm fishing, you'll probably see from the, the film, that I'm fishing quite a short line between me float and me, and me elastic. That's because of the wind is blowing slightly into my face, sort of left to right. Now, if I had a long line, it's going to end up, the float's going to end up coming out towards me and I'm going to be nowhere near where I'm feeding. So that's why I'm fishing quite a short line, even in quite difficult fishing conditions. So I just thought you'd run through that. So I'm going to hold my pole nice and steady. So that's on the 10 meter line, that little ball, a few four mils, and just be nice and patient. As like I said, it is winter carp fishing. We might have to wait a little bit of time. We never know. You don't know. You might have to wait minutes. You might have to be there sort of, you know, 40 minutes before your first bite. I've got me, I've got me float blacked out because it's really nice to see in that silver water. So it's six mil pellet. Plumbed up is normal. So just the body stuck out of the water. Because I know these these sort of two three pound carp can be really crafty some days, but I won't give it too long. I mean, if I don't get a bite there within 
sort of 15 minutes, I will move out to my 13 metre lines. But we'll see how we go. Oh, there you go. I'll just lift and drop that, and like two seconds later, I had a little dink. So that's brilliant. So it's probably taken about sort of 10 minutes, which is good, really, you know, considering we're in the winter. Feels like a nice carp, anyway, which is what we're obviously aiming to catch. So that little ball, a few four mils, six mil expander on the hook. And there's something about expanders during the winter. I don't know what it is. But when the fish have it, it's just so quick and so good. Obviously, go to a venue, there's lots and lots of skimmers and stuff. Sometimes you might have to fish hard pellet. But if you can, oh, look at that. What a beautiful carp that is. And these fish, these size fish, I fish at several places in, in England with these size carp. And expanders are absolutely deadly. It's amazing that you can go there and fish hard pellet in the summer and then you get one a chuck. In the winter, you put an expander on and it makes a huge difference. Look at that, absolutely stunning. So what I'm going to do, get him back. And my first, in my mind now, I'm just going to pot in a few four, them soap four mils because that's, that's how my brain works. I mean, it might be wrong, but that's what I just fancy doing. So I've put them few micros in in a ball, and I'm just going to put like a dozen soaked four mil pellets in my little cab pot. But what I'm thinking, obviously, you've got your two lines out at 13. Don't just forget about them. You know, in another sort of 10 minutes or so, if, even, if I'm still catching on this line, I want to go and still prime those two lines up because this, this line might just, might just dry up. So just tap them four mils in, just spread them out a little bit over sort of a two foot, two foot area. Just lift that six mil expander. Good job I put a 4B16 on as well today because that wind, it, oh, look at that. <laughs> so that was just literally, I just held it above them four mils, dropped it down, and it just flew under. I didn't know whether that was a bite or whether it was me for a minute, but I thought I'd give it a strike anyway. So that's awesome. So I said 6 mil expander, 16 GPM. Got me poor bug in. That's, so, that's, you know, that's what's so good about a side puller and a poor bung is you can fish nice elastic. You know, we are in winter mode. Although well, the fish carries on. So two fish, you know, took 10 minutes to get a bite and two fish in two chucks. I don't think them four mils reach the bottom, to be honest. So I've got to think about that now. You know, do I pot in again? Because I caught this fish straight away. I'll probably just go out and see if I can get another bite. Because what you don't want to do in the winter is obviously overfeed. It's just more about getting some fish in your peg and getting a bite rather than in the summer where you can put a lot of bait in. You know, you might be looking to catch shallow. Most important thing is I don't want to foul up them either. I don't want to end up trying to bring them just off bottom and things. Oh, they are absolutely immaculate. Look at them. Absolutely stunning. Perfectly hooked. So I'm not going to feed this time. It's a big, big six mil expander. If you can catch, you can't always catch on six mils, but if you can, it's absolutely deadly. The nice thing about them pro expanders, they stay on, so it gives you, you know, you can ship them out nice and steady. Got myself lined up with that tree opposite. Let that go down. I'm just going to try that again. Just hold it out a little bit. It's not easy with this side wind, to be honest. Let that go down. And then proper concentrate. You know, I'm like a heron when I'm fishing like this. Holding me pole, watching me float. Sometimes them little tiny fast dinks is, is all you get. And they're the bites that you've got to, you know, you've got to try and see. 
and strike it then bites if you just fit you just catch so many more fish I might just have to take one of my little adjustment stops off because that wind is just sort of when the wind gets up it's sort of oh look at that I don't know whether the cameraman would have caught that that was literally a real fast like that and that's what you've got to get tuned into when you're winter carp fishing it don't matter whether they're two pound or ten pound some days that's all you get and so many people miss out they say oh that wasn't a bite and i'm like well it probably was you just didn't strike at it because they'll reject it so quickly once they know there's something wrong with it you know that obviously they're really clued up so i think that was worth doing not feeding that time when i went out and that's what's going through my mind all the time when I'm fishing, whether I'm fishing for carp or silverfish. You know, keeping the fish in your peg with enough bait, but don't overdo it, especially this time of year, because if you go and overdo it this time of year, you might not get away with it. It's a lovely little fish. So this cast, I'm going to put another six mil on. Just hook it down through the barrel. I mean, I've got a 16 on with a six mil. You could even probably step up to a 14 hook because it's such a big hook bait. So I'm just going to feed sort of a dozen. I'm not cutting them out. I'm roughly a dozen four mil soap pellets. And this is, I'm trying to learn now from this line. You know, when I, when I refeed my 13 meter lines, I might just put four mils in. I'm going to tap that in, flick those full mills out, try and make a little bit of an area if you can. Sometimes putting them all down in a great big clump is not as good as trying to flick them out. So it looks like it's going to be brilliant. You never know with this carp fish in the winter. You can get a few early bites quick. The nice thing is as well, if you have this sort of triangle, triangle line, where start is 10 meters, say, you can, you know, you can always, if you, you might not even have caught, I might not have caught anything at 10 meters, but at least later in the session, I can come back to that line. Or if I want to rest the 13 meter lines, you know, you might even nick a couple of fish during the session. But that's the way I sort of work at these, this sort of fishing. You know, obviously in the summer, you'd be catching, you could catch really short, you know, down the edges, but 10 meters for me is a great, it's a, it's probably an area where a lot of people don't fish. A lot of match anglers don't fish. It's easy to ship in and out. It's easy to feed. And like I said, it's a great starting point. So we'll just see what happens now. So another 10 minutes, I'll refeed my 13 meter lines. I'm not going to just forget about them just because I've had three bites on this 10 meter line. The nice thing about those sort of size fish, they do feed all year round. And they do sometimes want a bit of bait. Just gonna lift and drop that like a float, float length out. Said at the moment that that wind is is not nice. It is blowing me float sort of towards me, slightly to the right. I've had them three fish quite quick to be honest. Literally three and three chucks, but I've not had a bite this cast yet. So, you know, I'm thinking right. You know, yeah, got to be patient because it is winter time. But I'm thinking, right, you know, I'm, I'm always thinking about what I'm going to feed. If I don't get a bite in the next sort of few minutes, because I had them three bites. Once I got that first bite, the next two bites come real quick. I mean, do I pot another little ball of micros in? As we all know, micro some days are an absolute must. You've got to keep putting micros in to keep getting bites. So that's what I'm thinking about. I 
what I'm probably going to think about, you know, is just feed those other two 30 meter lines with just a little bit of bait. Even though I've only been fishing like 20 minutes. Oh, there we go. So that's awesome. That way, you know, that way, good five minutes or so for that bite. Look at him powering off. Lovely. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get this fish in and feed them two 30 meter lines. Just use your side puller, like that. It's a lovely part of the country, so you've got the Malvern Hills over there. What a place to fish this is. Absolutely stunning. Look at him, proper scrapping fish. Lovely. More mirrors at the moment. And they obviously do get a bit bigger than that. But I don't mind catching these fish this time of year. They're absolutely freezing. My hands are proper cold, to be honest. So what I'm going to do, before I ship back out at 10 metres, I mean, I'm not going to come off this 10 metre line. I've had four fish there in like 20 minutes or so. But I just want to keep them 30 metre lines ticked over. So I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to put a little tiny ball of my crews in. So this is the, the, the ball, sorry, the line to my right. A few four mils. And this gives you a little bit more confidence. You know, I've had a few bites short. I've put like 25 four mils in with that little ball this time. And that's what's going through my mind. If I never had a bite at 10 metres, I'd be then thinking, right, I don't even need to feed them 30 metre lines. But with what's happened, I feel like I want to put a bit more bait in, even though we've been fishing for sort of 20, 25 minutes. So plonk that in. That's on my right hand line. And I'm going to do exactly the same as what I've done on my left hand line. Just put a little ball of my cruise in and a bit of sweet corn, a bit of that F1 corn. So another little ball like that and sort of 20 grains of corn. And I see so many anglers say, well, I'm catching there. I'm not going to feed the other lines. It's pointless. And that's where they come unstuck sometimes. Even though you've got to stop. And that's what makes you a better angler. Keeping them lines primed up. And hopefully keep putting fish in the net. But obviously with the conditions at the moment, it's quite nice fishing 10 metres because the wind's not very nice. And if a fish are willing to come that close, sort of thank you very much. I'm going to put a few four mils in again. About 10. It's not a lot of bait. And I honestly think carp fishing nowadays in the winter is not about putting a lot of bait in. It's about putting enough bait in to keep the fish in your peg and, and keep them interested. So a few four mils. See what happens this cast. I might have to just feed another little ball of micros. It's obviously worked then micros because I put them in and it took 10, min 10 minutes to get a bite. So a few four mils again. But I love when I'm carp fishing, I love trying to, trying to get them on the bigger pellet. Oh, I missed that, I think. I think that was a bite. I'm going to take one of those little tiny adjustments shot off. Off me rig. Got some. I've got some number 12 stops on there when I make me rigs up. So if you go out in conditions like this, and it's quite difficult to see your float. Just take one or two of them off. A bit more bristle showing. Because what I don't want to be doing is striking it. Striking it thin air. So I'm going to go straight back out again. Just drop the bulk and the pellet where you're fishing. 
and just proper concentrate. That's better. A bit more float showing. Obviously, if I was on the other side of the wind off my back, I could have my float dotted right down. You can't really do it in this wind. If you're not careful, you'll end up striking it at nothing. Proper difficult, you know, difficult in these conditions. Toes sort of coming at me a little bit. I'm just trying to hold it dead still. Obviously, I can try a four mil pellet. Four mil expander, I can try a little piece of corn on the hook. But I just thought I'd start on a six mil. Because if they do have six mil, one, they normally give you a better bite. And sometimes it can be it can be actually quicker to get a bite on a six mil and it can be a four mil for some reason. Even though you're not feeding sort of six mils. Obviously, we've only just started, so obviously, that's the sort of thing you can do while you're fishing. Just say, right, well, this cast, I'll just try a four mil, and you might get a bite a bit quicker, you might not get a bite. That's something that you've got to try during, the, during your sort of fishing day, if you like. It's amazing some days that a, a carp won't pick up certain baits. It's amazing. So I'm just going to lift and drop that, just a float length, because I had one doing that, and I had a bite literally two or three seconds after it sort of settled again on the last fish. There we go. Brilliant. Proper, proper winter carp fishing. One of the my, one of my favourite fishings, to be honest, with expanders for carp. It doesn't get better. It just seems to have it. And the nice thing is, coming to a, a venue like this, there's lots of different size fish. And I don't think there's that many silvers in here. So you can sit there and sort of think, well, every bite I get is is a carp. So if you miss a bite, it's sort of annoying. Feels like a bit of slightly bigger stamp, I think. But there's no rush, you know, take your time. Simple, I said, simple rig, simple bulk. You see how much line I've probably got about probably 14 inches of line between my elastic and my float. Maybe 16 inches. Oh, lovely, lovely common cart. So that's the first common of the day. Look at him. Absolutely stunning. Lovely, perfectly hooked. So just gonna not bother them micros at the moment. I'm quite this is yeah, this is good. Number six mil. Let's go for the same motions. A few four mil pellets. If you struggle with um, getting your pellets out in your little pot, just dunk them in the water first before you ship out, and that helps them stay in the pot. So I can just sort of flick them in like that. Lifting and dropping could be important today, even though that wind's not great for fishing in. It's just steady. 
think that's me fourth or fifth carp. And they're not like, like whacking the float under. They're like weird little bites and you'll get a load of that during the winter, whether you're fishing for F1s, whether you're fishing for carp. A lot of the bites you get nowadays are these like fast, it's like someone's flicking your float. You've got to be aware of that. I tell everybody, you know, these little these little fast little dinks of your float are so important. A bit different if you're getting lots of liners, which you're probably not going to get during the winter, to be honest. You know, if you go in the warmer months when you're getting lots of liners, obviously you don't really, you don't want to be striking at certain things because they are liners. But this time of year, this is when you learn a lot about the little bites that you get from sometimes the biggest fish. I mean, loose feeding is always a great option. Um, it's not going to be so easy today in this wind. So I think a lot of this fishing today for me personally is going to be about potting in with the big pot and using the little cab pot. But it's it's a great option. You know, even if you're not fishing one line, if one line's not been any good for you, just start loose feeding over it. Because late in the session, you might just go on it and nick a few fish and, you know, and catch you some more fish. It could be, you know, if you're a match angler like me, can be absolutely crucial at the end of the match. I'm just going to lift and drop again. So it might not stay on. It might not stay on this line. To be honest, it's quite nice to get a few bites in the first half an hour. Sometimes you go in the winter and you might have to wait, you know, a long, long time for some bites. Oh, that was lifting and dropping again. Just after lifting and drop, I had that indication. I missed it, eh? I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna try a four mil. I'm not gonna feed again, I missed that bite. Just try a four mil, it's the sort of thing I do, you know? Just to see. So, just try a four mil, just for a, see what happens. It might not make any difference. It might, I'm just, you know, six mils for me, some venues I've been on, it makes a huge difference. Massive. I've been to certain venues, you can't already get a bite on a four mil expand. You put a six mil on and you get a bite every chuck real quick. I sat here for a while now, tried a four mil expander, nothing, went back to a six, and it's definitely, it seemed to have just sort of left this line. Now that's, what I fancy doing is putting a ball of micros in on this line, and then just trying me 30 meter line. I was hoping they were going to just stay at 10 meters, but obviously winter fishing, it ain't always like that. So what I'm going to do is feed another ball of micros. Same sort of size balls with what I started with. Like a sort of, you know, decent size, really. But we are fishing for carp. A few four mils again. i am just go out to 13. I might have to start rotating my lines. I'm hoping they'll come back on this, these micros. It might be the micros that's obviously turning them on and catching me the fish. So I'm going to go out to 13 on my right hand line first of all and see what happens.
Mm, not sure whether that's, not sure whether that was a bite or not then. I well, struck at it anyway. It looked like a bite. Well, she do miss a few bites with expanders. You never know. There might be a few roaching that about as well sometimes. Just want that wind just to die down. You know you're probably missing out on a few fish because of the wind, but that's that's what you got to put up with. It's a bit weird. The toe, the toe's a little bit different to that short line. It doesn't. The float doesn't seem to be coming back at me so much out there. It seems to be sort of straight off the the pole end, which is nice. And it, that is, if anything, it's probably trying to back up to the left slightly. You can just sense it's sort of sitting there quite nice. Well, that 10 meter line is not as good as it is out there. And you'll find that on some lakes. The toe can be different at different lengths. You know, in the middle, it might not be moving at all. But that's sitting out there really nice. As long as it's not too gusty, it looks like it's going to fly under, to be honest. Obviously, I can always introduce a little bit of corn on that line. You know, every time I pot in, I can always sort of pot in a couple of couple of grains of corn. It's not going to make any difference if you pot in a couple of grains of corn. You know, it doesn't say that you're not going to be able to catch on expanders over the top. And as we all know, corn is a, a fantastic bait, not just for carp, but for skimmers and everything, really. But I just want to try and stick with expanders because it's been good up to now. You know, and that's winter carp fish is strange. I've gone out there expecting it to sort of bury straight away. I think I did miss a little bite, a little indication. And that's what you've got to expect sometimes. You know, obviously it's always tricky when you're fishing another line, when to top up another line, because you're thinking about, you know, not overdoing it. You don't want to put too much bait in, but you want to make sure you put a little bit of bait in. Loose feeding is always going to be difficult today with the conditions. So sort of, that's why when I went out on this line, I tapped in just a few four mils because I've not, you know, I've not been I've not been fishing it like a ten meter line where I've been catching a fish, feeding a bit of bait. I mean, it's a bit different out there. What I might do, if I don't get a bite in the next few minutes, I'm going to end up topping that up. I'm going to come back, put another little ball of my cruise in. Ooh, wind. Definitely feels like I need to top that up, to be honest. I've gone out there. I think I'll just top that up. It's not, it's not what I was expecting to be honest. After catching a few on that 10 meter line, just got to go careful now because this is where things get a little bit tricky if you're not careful. So I'm just going to put a tiny little ball in, a bit smaller, like that, because I might have to come back on this pretty quick. So just a little ball, a bit bigger than a marble. Just put a few more. Four mils in. I'm just going to put a couple of grains of corn in as well. And I'm just going to go on that other 13 meter line just to see. So I'm going to tap that in. This is where it gets interesting in your, in your winter carp fishing. You know, you're trying to. We all know that normally the carp. Fishing gets a bit better later in your session. The nice thing as well here, I don't need to fish a different float. It's literally from 10 metres to 13. It is like a snooker table. It's proper, nice and flat. I'm just going to try and have a little chuck. 
on that other line that I fed it 13 to the left bit difficult there because the, that is like st literally straight into my straight into my float that um, that angle of the wind just see what happens sometimes this sort of fishing can it's weird you're catching certain little errors in your peg even though you probably fed them quite similar and you can never sort of you can't sort of say why and you know what you've done different it just happens like that sometimes and then uh, later on in the session that your, your line that you've not caught on can sometimes be your best line But that's quite that's that's not so good there because obviously I'm, I'm fishing directly into the wind to my left. It's actually the wind's turned a little bit. It's actually blowing more into my face now what it was when we started, which is a bit of a pain. As you can probably see that the float's actually coming underneath me pole. which is probably one of the hardest situations to fish in presentation wise so I've just gone over on that line put an expander on let me a few fish I've had on expander this is obviously the line I fed a little ball of micros and a bit of corn I won't sit there long, I'm going to come back and put a little bit of corn on just to see. That's nice, the wind's just dropped down a little bit. It'd be nice if it stayed like that. Oh, that was a bite. That was definitely a bite. <clears throat> I'll give that a proper good strike and miss that. That was definitely an indication that. Struck that hard, I tangled myself up, look. I'm twisted around my float. I'm just gonna put a little bit of, just gonna put a little tiny bit of F1 corn on. Because I have fed a bit there. Just to try it. And just tap in four or five bits of corn in the little pot. Sort of thing I do during the you know during these matches. That's what's so nice about keeping it, having a couple of options. Just tap that little bit of corn out. That's definitely an indication though. Just as that wind dropped as well, I had that indication. Probably presentation was a bit better. I'd love to have fished a, you know, I'd love to have fished a bit of a lighter float today, but you're not going to be able to do it in these conditions. It's virtually impossible. I'd love to have fished like a 4B12, you know, sort of strung out if you like when the conditions are tough. I had this rig set up as well, but I had a 4B12 for sort of flicking it, flicking it out past your your bait, um, but the conditions are not going to allow it today. You've always got the option is oh, oh I think that was an indication. You've always got the option as well of putting loose micros in. I've only obviously put little balls in at the moment because of the conditions, trying to you know, trying to get them to come to a little area. But if, if it's really, really tough, I will just try putting some loose micros in, obviously making a little bit of an error on the bottom. Definitely a few fish about them. I had an indication on that 30 meter line. I've had definitely had one indication on this line as well. 
There we go. Tiny little bite then. Ridiculous bite. So that's on a little bit of corn. Proper winter carp fishing. Doesn't get better. My nose is starting to run because of the wind. So that's brilliant. So all I'm thinking about now is obviously me first. I've still got that 10 meter line. I'm, not, I'm just going to do the reverse of what I've done when I was fishing 10 meter line. I might have to put a little bit of bait in. I mean, I caught a few there at the start. That's a slightly better fish as well out there. And that's on corn. At least the sun's out at the moment. It's quite filled a bit of heat on my fingers, which is nice. Oh yeah, nice common. Yes, we four pound that one. Look at that, absolutely stunning. Beautiful that. Perfectly hooked again. So what I'm gonna do I'm just going to put a little tiny piece of corn on again. Bit of hook showing. A little bit of corn. Sort of five or six grains of corn. It's very negative, but that's the way it is. This sort of winter carp fishing sometimes. I'm going to try and flick that past again as well. Just tap them few bits of corn in around your float. I just know if that wind dropped and you could see every little movement of your float. And I know I've missed I've missed two bites out there. I've missed one on this line and I missed the one on the other line. So and I, I I would have thought both of them indications would have been carp. So there's there's definitely a few about. Well I've been fishing at 30 metres for probably 20 minutes now. And I've I've had that one carp on a little bit of corn. And I've definitely missed two or three indications. But it's not, you know, it's difficult fishing, which obviously winter fishing is always going to be a bit like this. So what I'm going to do, because obviously I've fed me 10 meter long. Well, I've, I've had five carp on that. Uh, and what I'm going to do is come back. I'm going to put a little bit, a few more micros in on both of them lines. But I'm going to do some of what I do on the method feeder a lot. I'm going to put a little bit of bait booster on my two mil pellets just to see and put them in loose as well. I'm going to get a little bit of bait booster. I'm just going to put a tiny little bit on my two mils like that. Just swish them around on the top. And just mean what you want to do because the water's, you know, it's still got a bit of colour in it. You smell them, it's actually beautiful. So, I'm going to put just a few literally loose like that. So, they're going to break up on both lines. I'm going to put that bit of corn in that corn on that corn line and just come back on that 10 meter line and just have another quick look. So, it's a bit tricky at the moment. So, a few loose two mils with a little bit of corn. 
I'm just going to put a few loose ones on that right hand line with a few four mil pellets again. There's definitely a few about, so I've, I've had a few little indications out there. Well, just want to come back on that 10 meter line, just have a look. So just a few, few, you know, a few loose two mils might just create a little bit of area on the bottom and draw a few fish in me peg. I'm just going to go back on that 10 meter line. Might get six mil longs, that's what I caught them. I've just caught that one fish on that corn, but that six mil pellet short was was really good. So take them two sections off. And just see what happens there. I really thought that 30 meter line could be really good with catching those few fish short. Oh, look at that, I can't believe that. That's ridiculous. <laughs> and that just shows you what, you know, what fishing can be like. Like I said earlier, one line can be much better than the others. I mean, that's ridiculous. I mean, six mooks man, it literally hit the bottom, just flew under. Feels like a decent fish as well, that. That's what's nice about fishing, like a nice 10, you know. Got your top kit in your hand, you keep the fish down, you get the fish near you, then use your puller. I mean, that was instant. But that's what I was expecting to happen out on them lines, to be honest. Oh, look at that. Look at that fully scaled mirror. Absolutely beautiful. It's one of my favourite carp, that. Oh, look at him. What an absolute stunner that is. Probably four pound. Nailed that as well. So, that just, you know, that's what I was expecting out there. And that, you know, that's why we go fishing. It's like little things like that sometimes. Let's change me up a minute. And screw me up length like that one. So nice and easy, they're also pre-tied hooks. Takes seconds to put a new hook length on. Like that. So straight back in on the six mil again. It's a great big pellet, and sometimes on the day, I said they can be absolutely deadly. I'm not going to feed nothing. Just going to go and have a look. I don't think it's about presentation. I mean, presentation out there, even though the wind's not great, was still good. I mean, that just flew under as soon as it hit the bottom. And I thought it might, you know, at the moment, it might, it's not really working like rotating. I've had the one out there, I've definitely missed a couple of bites. So it'll be interesting to see if how long it takes me to get another bite here. And the weird thing is there, that toe is definitely going left to right, slightly in my face. Which is more awkward than what it's actually doing at 13 metres. Well, I've actually caught six carp at 10 metres and one at 13 at the moment. But that could change, you know, them 13 metre lines could just start getting stronger and stronger. I thought it'd be the other way around, personally. 
I mean, I thought I might go in and nick maybe one or two at 10 metres and then I'd have to fish 13 metres and keep priming this 10 metre line up and maybe I might have caught a few later on in the day. Just going to come back. Just going to try some up. I'm just gonna take me just gonna take me cap off me pot. Just put me up a bit. I'm just gonna pot in a little ball of micros and fish straight on it. Just see see what happens. So I'm gonna make a tiny little ball like that. Just tap that into the pot. And just try and fish directly on it just to see what happens. Just go careful shipping it out. Just tap that little ball. It's only a little tiny ball, but just try and fish right on top of it. There we go, look at that. It's just a feeling I had then that I want to be fishing on top of a ball. But that is it 10 metres again. I mean, it's, that's the sort of thing that goes through my mind, you know, not just winter fishing, but summer fishing. Little things like that can make a huge difference. You can never explain that. It's very hard to explain to people, but it's things that I've learned obviously over a long time of fishing and that's why we do these little videos it's a smaller carp but proper proper scrapping fish in this place i must admit And that's got a little bit of bait booster on it, them pellets, that little bit of smell. It's like ground bait sometimes, you know, ground bait's a fantastic bait to catch fish. Look at him, like a little ghosty, little ghosty mirror. So a little bit of smell, a little bit of attraction. I'll do that again. So a tiny little ball like that. Just enough to get it down and it'll break up. Just thumb that in the bottom of the pot. Just go really careful when you're shipping out. You might not be able to do it every single cast though, that's the thing in the winter. So tap that in. Like that. And where that little, where you see the ring come off of the bait, just try and get your bait right in it. A bit craftier than what you think, actually, these fish. They're not like just hanging themselves today. I would love to have it flat calm and my float dotted right down and I'm sure you would definitely put more fish in the net but that's you know that's hindsight you can't always do it that wind is definitely starting to just ease off a bit Might only have like two bites there and I might have to get away from it. Have another go long. See if I can nick a few carp or a couple of carp. And then come back. So they're not they're not they're definitely not sort of lining up, which you you know you don't expect that in the winter. That's they're sort of red letter days. This is a day when you're gonna have to work for every single bite, change things around a little bit, try a few different things. Because I'm sure what happens is you hook one. 
if there's a few in your peg, they probably spook off and then it takes quite a long time for the fish to come back again. Or at the moment, you know, as it, as it goes on, it might change. I actually fished a mash at the weekend and it was really, really tough. You know, not just for me, but for everybody. And like the last hour, it's unbelievable. It's just like the fish are in the area and they're just not feeding. And all of a sudden, it's like a light switch. And that's what you've got to be aware of. You know, sometimes you'll, you'll be there and you're sort of half given up. And then all of a sudden you get a pike and it could be on pellet. It could be on meat, on corn. And you might get a run of fish in that last hour and, you know, win your section, framing the match. There we go. So that's awesome. Little ball again. I really thought, I really thought feeding four mils could be the score, especially like the start I had. But at the moment, I think you've probably been missing out on a few fish by by not putting micros in enough. Slightly better one, common again, I think. Oh no, Maureen the mirror. I'll make sure everyone counts. Another beautiful three pound, three pounder. Stunning. Well, Coming to the end of the end of the day for me fishing, it's been it's been brilliant to be honest. I'm fishing at 13 at the moment, and just to go through how it sort of panned out, really. I've obviously fed the three lines at the start. Started at 10 meters, caught four or five carp there quite quick to be honest. Probably like 40 minutes. Obviously went out long, missed a couple of bites, caught a couple of carp. But when I started, it took me a while to get into it really, but when I started putting them little balls in, little balls of two mil fins, and fishing with either a six mil or a four mil expander over the top, it's definitely made a massive difference today. I mean, and what I've done as the, as the sort of day's gone on is I've cancelled one of my long lines out. The, long, the line I fished to me left, which was really awkward anyway because of the wind, I forgot about that because the 10 meter line's probably been the best line. So all I've done is concentrated on the 10 meter line and one 13 meter line. It didn't seem to be for me today going round three lines has not been right. I've had to concentrate on the 10 meter line when I thought the fish were there. And if I wanted to rest it, go out to one line and try and nick a couple of carp. And I've nicked a few carp out there and I've actually changed that round to the same. I've actually started putting little balls and micros in and fishing with an expander on the hook again. Expander today has definitely been the best bait. Six mil or four. I've had a few few on four mils, but mostly on six mils. But I've just rested the 10 meter. I had a nice little spell there. I probably caught four or five again. I'm feeding a little ball every fish and all of a sudden it just goes and that's when I go back out to me 13, try and nick one or two. I've missed a few bites out there, probably because of the presentation is not great with the wind. And I've probably left that 10 meter line like between five and 10 minutes now. I'm going to drop back in on that and see if we can nick one just to finish the day off. But it's been proper winter carp fishing, you know, odd bite here and there, messing around with your feeding. Two mils, I think if I'd have fed two mils earlier in those little balls, I probably would have caught more. But that's hindsight. And what I'm going to do, because that wind's getting back up again, I'm just going to drop back in on that. Because I did put a little ball in before I went out long. 
just going to drop back in on that line again. And like I said, I think if it had been flat calm conditions, better conditions, or a slightly different angle wind, and I could have had my float dotted right down, we would have definitely caught more. But, you know, you can only do what the conditions allow you to do. But amazingly, like I said earlier in the film, I honestly thought that the 10 meter line would be maybe the line to start with, nick a few, nick a couple if you're lucky. The 30 meter lines would be good and then drop back on, drop back on the 10 meter line later in the day. But for some reason, it's been the completely opposite to what I expected. It's been like, use the 10 meter line as your main line and nick a couple of fish out there at 13 to sort of keep your keep the fish coming and you know give this 10 meter line a rest basically and it's whether whether because the wind's been it's sort of blowing straight in my face it's they if they may be pushing a bit i'm not too sure but the 10 meter line has definitely been the line to get the bites and you get a nice little run there obviously i've missed a few but oh, there we go look at that look so just leaving that for Probably seven or eight minutes I've been out at 13 metres. And I'm come back, come back in on that 10 metre line. And it's been really, really nice fishing, to be honest. Proper expander fishing. Odd bite from, from quality fish. And what I'm going to do, I'm gonna, for, unfortunately, I've got to call this the last fish of, this, of the day. Oh, it's nice common carp as well. We've had a few commons, mostly mirrors. That one was probably the least fighting fish I've caught all day. So I'll hold him up for you. Because every fish we caught here at Court, Court Farm Fishery has been absolutely immaculate, to be honest. So we're going to call that with the last fish of the day. I've had a great winter's day carp fishing here at Court Farm Fishery near Worcester. Getting back in the net and show you guys exactly what I've caught today. Well, what a fantastic day here at Court Farm Fishery near Worcester. I've really enjoyed it. I mean, look at the size of these fish, you know, between two and four pound, like I was told, there was a lot of these in here. Uh, it took me some time really to get into it today. Um, and like I said, you know, during the film, what I thought would happen, it's been the opposite way round, which has been really good for the camera. It just shows you what goes through my mind when I'm fishing, you know, for winter carp. I think you've picked up some, you know, tips on how to sort of move around your peg, try different feeding patterns. But today by far, Expander has been the bait by far. Six mils mostly, caught a few on four mils. But as soon as I changed, probably halfway through the session, I changed the pot in those little balls of micros in and fishing straight on it, it's been mega. And I think if we'd have stayed on longer, we'd have caught more and more and more, even in real difficult fishing conditions. So there you go. You know, get out, try your winter carp fishing, try the little tips I'll give you, and I'm sure you'll put more carp in your nets. And thanks for watching.